Hey there, beautiful peoples. I hope you're all having a fantastic day again today. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. This is your favorite royal critic back here, and today, because what I'm about to share with you is going to have you shaking your heads in disbelief. That's right. After burning nearly every bridge they had in the UK, our favorite former royals are now apparently trying to crawl their way back into British high society's good graces, and the desperation is palpable. So now, you know, watching the Sussexes trying to navigate their post-royal life has been like watching a particularly painful episode of a reality show. But this latest development takes the cake. According to sources, Meghan Markle, yes, the same Meghan who couldn't wait to flee the UK fast enough, is now panicking about her Hollywood status and trying to use Harry to rebuild bridges with none other than the Beckhams. Let me tell you something, my dear viewers. I have been covering the Royals for years, and this level of desperation is truly something else. Remember when the Sussexes accused Victoria Beckham of leaking stories to the press? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Now Meghan's carrying Victoria's handbags and wearing her clothes like some sort of fashion peace offering. It's like watching someone try to apologize by wearing a sorry t-shirt. It's just not going to cut it. And why this sudden change of heart? Well, it seems our Hollywood Duchess is finally realizing that her star might be fading faster than a sunset in California. With Donald Trump's potential return to the White House looming and their US situation looking increasingly precarious, it appears the Sussexes are frantically searching for a plan B. And wouldn't you know it, suddenly those British connections they were so eager to trash don't look so bad after all. Now let's talk about the absolute irony of this situation, shall we? Here's Meghan, who spent years trying to distance herself from anything British, now desperately trying to cozy up to Victoria Beckham. And why? Because the Beckhams are getting closer to William and Catherine. It's like watching someone who quit their job in a dramatic huff, now trying to get rehired through the back door. And can we talk about how this reflects on poor Harry? Once again, he's being sent on yet another mission by Meghan to try and repair relationships that she helped destroy. It's like watching a puppet being pulled by very visible strings and honestly, it's becoming more painful to watch by the day. Speaking of Harry, remember when he and David Beckham were actually good friends? They attended each other's weddings, supported each other's charitable causes. It was a genuine friendship. But what happened? Well, according to Tom Bower's revelations, Meghan happened. She accused Victoria of leaking stories to the press. And just like that, another friendship went up in smoke. You know what's particularly telling about this whole situation? The timing. Just when Meghan's Hollywood dreams seem to be crumbling faster than a sandcastle at high tide, suddenly she's wearing Victoria Beckham's clothes and carrying her bags. It's like watching the world's most obvious product placement. Except this time, it's not just about selling clothes, it's about buying back credibility. And let's talk about that Hollywood status they're so desperately trying to maintain. Remember all those grand plans when they first moved to California? The Netflix deals, the Spotify contract, the promises of content that would change the world. Well, my dear viewers, how's that working out? The Spotify deal? Gone. The Netflix success? Let's just say it's been less than spectacular. And now, they're facing the very real possibility of their American dream turning into a nightmare. Meanwhile, look at the Beckhams. They've maintained their relationships with both sides of the royal family, but they're notably getting closer to William and Catherine. And why wouldn't they? The Prince and Princess of Wales represent everything that's right about the monarchy. Dignity, duty, and genuine service to the people. They don't need to play games or manipulate relationships for publicity. What's particularly fascinating is how Meghan's trying to use fashion as a way back 
into Victoria's good graces. It's like watching someone try to apologize for burning down your house by buying your furniture. The Heat magazine source really hit the nail on the head when they talked about Meghan being desperate, because that's exactly what this looks like, desperation. And let's not forget why they need these connections so badly right now. With Trump potentially returning to the White House and Harry's immigration status under scrutiny due to his drug admissions in spare, suddenly having friends in high places back in the UK doesn't seem like such a bad idea, does it? It's like watching someone frantically searching for their old house keys after realizing they might get locked out of their new place. The part that really gets me, and I know it gets to many of you too, is the sheer audacity of it all. After everything they've said about the UK, ab about the royal family, about the British press, now they want back in? After all the bridges they've burned, all the relationships they've destroyed, all the trust they've shattered, it's like watching someone try to rebuild a house they personally demolished, using only scotch tape and wishful thinking. And what about the impact on Harry? Once again, he's being used as the bridge builder, the peacemaker, the one who has to go cap in hand to old friends and try to smooth things over. Remember when Harry was his own person, when he had his own identity, his own friends, his own life. Now he's reduced to being Meghan's personal ambassador, trying to repair relationships that she helped destroy. The contrast with William and Catherine couldn't be more stark. While the Sussexes are desperately trying to rebuild burned bridges, the Prince and Princess of Wales continue to build genuine, meaningful relationships based on mutual respect and shared values. They don't need to play games or manipulate situations for publicity. Their work speaks for itself. And speaking of work, let's talk about what this desperate attempt at reconciliation really means. It's a clear admission that their Hollywood dream isn't quite working out as planned. All those grand promises of content that would change the world, all those talks about building their own brand separate from the royal family, where has it led them? to carrying designer handbags as peace offerings and wearing silk shirts as olive branches? The source's comment about Meghan needing a power couple in their corner is particularly revealing. It shows just how far they've fallen in the Hollywood hierarchy. Remember when they first arrived in California? They were the hot ticket, the exciting new arrivals, the royal couple who were going to shake things up. Now, they're reduced to trying to piggyback on other people's success and influence. And let's talk about that influence for a moment. The Beckhams have managed to maintain their status and relevance for decades without having to rely on constant drama and controversy. They've built a genuine empire based on talent, hard work, and smart business decisions. Compare that to the Sussexes' approach of burning bridges and then trying to rebuild them when convenient. What's particularly interesting is how this situation perfectly illustrates the difference between genuine relationships and strategic ones. William and Catherine's friendship with the Beckhams has grown naturally based on shared values and mutual respect. Meanwhile, Meghan's attempting to use fashion choices and public appearances as a way to force a reconciliation. It's like comparing a natural garden to plastic flowers. One grows organically, the other is just for show. The timing of all this is particularly telling. Just as their Netflix content seems to be losing steam, just as their other ventures appear to be struggling, suddenly they're making these very public overtures to former friends. It's like watching a desperate chess player making increasingly risky moves as they run out of pieces on the board. And what about their existing allies in the US? Or should I say, their dwindling number of allies? Remember all those celebrity friends who attended their wedding? The ones who were supposed to help them take Hollywood by storm? Where are they now? It seems the Sussexes are learning the hard way that Hollywood friendships can be just as fleeting as their Netflix success. 
the potential Trump victory must be causing some sleepless nights in Montecito. After all, Harry's immigration status is already under scrutiny due to his drug admissions in spare, and Trump hasn't exactly been shy about his opinions on the Sussexes. Suddenly, having some powerful friends back in the UK doesn't seem like such a bad insurance policy, does it? But here's the thing that really gets me, and I know many of you feel the same way. It's the sheer hypocrisy of it all. After all their talk about breaking free from the constraints of British society, after all their complaints about the UK and its institutions, after all their criticism of the royal family and its associates, now they want back in. It's like watching someone slam the door dramatically, only to knock politely five minutes later asking to use the bathroom. And what about the impact on their credibility? Every time they make one of these desperate attempts to rebuild burned bridges, it just reinforces what many have been saying all along, that their exit from the royal family wasn't so much about finding freedom as it was about finding fame. Except now, the fame isn't quite working out as planned, and suddenly, those British connections they were so quick to dismiss are looking mighty appealing. The way they're going about it is particularly telling. Instead of making a genuine attempt at reconciliation, acknowledging their past mistakes and trying to rebuild trust, they're using fashion choices and public appearances as some sort of symbolic olive branch. It's like trying to fix a broken relationship by liking someone's Instagram posts. It's superficial at best, manipulative at worst. And let's talk about the timing of Meghan's fashion choices, suddenly showing up with Victoria Beckham's designs, just when they're most in need of powerful allies. That's not a coincidence, my friends. That's calculated. It's like watching a very expensive, very public form of sucking up. The sources comment about needing the Beckhams in their corner really says it all, doesn't it? It's not about genuine friendship or reconciliation. It's about status, influence, and access. They're not looking for friends. They're looking for allies in their increasingly desperate attempt to maintain their relevance. Meanwhile, William and Catherine continue to show what real royal work looks like. While the Sussexes are playing these publicity games, the Prince and Princess of Wales are out there making a real difference, building genuine relationships and showing what true service to the crown looks like. And what about King Charles and Queen Camilla? They've maintained their dignity throughout all this drama, focusing on their duties and responsibilities while their younger son and his wife continue to make headlines for all the wrong reasons. It must be particularly painful for Charles to watch his son being used as a pawn in these publicity games. The really sad part is that none of this needed to happen. Harry and Meghan could have had it all. The respect, the platform, the ability to make real change in the world. Instead, they chose to burn their bridges in the most public way possible. And now, they're finding out that Hollywood fairy tales don't always have happy endings. You know what really strikes me about this whole situation? The complete lack of self-awareness. Do they really think people can't see through these transparent attempts at reconciliation? Do they really believe that carrying a designer handbag can make up for accusations of leaking stories to the press? It's like watching someone try to fix a broken window with a band-aid. It's not just ineffective, it's almost embarrassing to watch. And what about their children in all this? While William and Catherine's children are growing up with a clear sense of identity and purpose, surrounded by stable relationships and genuine connections, what kind of example are Harry and Meghan setting for ghost kids Archie and Lilibet, who we still don't know if even exist or not? That relationships are disposable until you need them again? That loyalty only matters when it's convenient? The contrast between the two couples' approaches to friendship couldn't be more stark. William and Catherine build and maintain relationships through genuine interaction 
shared values, and mutual respect. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan seem to treat relationships like their items on a strategic checklist, useful when needed, disposable when not. And let's talk about the potential fallout from this latest move. If their attempt at reconciliation with the Beckhams fails, and let's be honest, carrying a handbag isn't exactly a foolproof peace offering. What's their next move? Who else is left in their rapidly shrinking circle of potential allies? It's like watching someone play their last card in a game they're clearly losing. The really ironic part is that this desperate attempt to rebuild bridges might actually make things worse. After all, who wants to rebuild a friendship with someone who's only reaching out because they need something? It's like trying to borrow money from someone you previously accused of stealing from you. It's not just unlikely to work, it's likely to make the situation even worse. So, my dear Royal Watchers, what do you think about this latest development? Are we watching the beginning of the Sussexes' great British comeback attempt? Or is this just another desperate move in their increasingly chaotic game plan? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more royal coverage. Remember, we're living through extraordinary times in royal history. Watching as some choose to serve with dignity and purpose, while others, well, you know how that story's going. Until next time, keep watching, keep commenting, and keep supporting our wonderful working royals who continue to make us proud every single day. This is your friendly neighborhood royal critic signing off for now. But don't worry, with the way things are going with the Sussexes, I'm sure I'll have plenty more to discuss very soon. Take care, my lovely viewers, and God save the King. Peace out.